lovelies, Karibu Sana to my YouTube channel. My name is Gani Smaina. Thank you so much for joining us if you're new here. If you're a returning viewer, Asante Sana Sana Sana. And in today's video, we, we pick up from where we left off last week. Basically, when we were talking about the interviewing process when you're pursuing your privilege or an internship in the legal profession. So let's get into it. was you have sent out your CV, you have gone to these law firms and you're basically trying to land the interview. So once you've landed the interview, the next part is actually getting ready for the interview process. Now I will not lie to you, it is almost impossible to know what the interviewers will ask you. There are a few standard questions, but largely for the legal profession, you do not know what area of law you will be asked about in the interview. So I'll give you a few tips on what you could expect, which are basically standard questions and how best to prepare before I actually get into it from last week's video I got a lot of feedback from you guys and I'm so grateful I just want to mention that I may not have mentioned the step that you need to have a very good and pleasant CV when you are going to these places and looking for an interview please do not send your CV in word format send it in PDF if you are struggling with a layout for your CV go to Canva they have so many templates for a resume look as professional as possible So, as you're getting ready for the interview the first thing that I found very helpful is know what exactly is on your CV it may not happen with all the interviewers you will meet but you cannot fail to know something that you did that you put in your CV because you look like you're a blatant liar meaning if you took part in moot court understand which moot court you went to last even though it's been years if you wrote an essay about a certain subject if you're saying that you did your dissertation on an area of interest all this could be asked and it won't be asked directly for instance in my case what happened is someone looked at my transcript and saw my dissertation grade and from there they asked me you know what was your topic in your dissertation and i was supposed to explain it and why i picked that as my dissertation topic another question i was also asked was in moot court and basically because i had put in quite a bit about moot court i was asked so how does you know how does moot court help in this professional or how is it going to be important now that you have the experience and you're coming to the farm another thing that I was asked for um, outside my CV and I would ask you guys to really 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 think about this you'll be asked what outside the law makes you outstanding and for me at that particular point I said that I blog about restaurants and it got to break the ice with the interviewers so the first thing that you should know is even as you're coming up with your CV again making reference to last week's video that i will link up here and down below in case you've missed it do have that extra thing because everyone at this particular point either has an llb or this extra you know academic qualifications so you would need to have that extra thing about you it doesn't it doesn't always have to be academic for instance I have in my CV the fact that I'm a big reader and I was asked in another interview what my last read was. So you can't sneak in things like you're a big reader and then not have a book that you're either currently reading or just finished reading. Another interesting thing which made me remove it from my CV is I had said that I liked to travel but because of COVID I hadn't traveled. So someone was like, so when did you last travel? And I was like, <laughs> I haven't traveled because of COVID but it was in my CV so this basically means that whatever you put in your CV please make sure that you have something to support it so if you're saying you like to do a certain thing as a hobby have a way of showing it or have a backstory for it the second and possibly most important thing when you get the interview is you have to look the part I cannot even emphasize this enough. You just have to look like you are bringing your A game. I don't know if you guys have seen this. You know this Lewis Lit interview that was trending on TikTok some time back with this babe and Lewis Lewis Lit from Suits, and he was just like, "I nothing on your resume impresses me, but that babe, the confidence that she had." If I find that clip on inside, Secretary of your class at Harvard Law, clerk for Chief Justice Roberts, glowing letters of recommendation. You think this impresses me? negative which means you have exactly five minutes to convince me that you're the one i don't need five minutes i am the one it's you who's on the clock lewis i have standing offers from the top three firms in the city pearson harvin is a top three firm well i used to think so but if it's taking you this long to meet with me maybe you're slipping oh, i'm not i'm not we're, we're, we're not slipping. you need to submit a formal offer by noon tomorrow if you want me to even consider working here 
What? Maria, hold on a second. Just wait right there. Wait right there. You four, beat it. Position has been filled. I'll beat any salary by 50%, 25,000 signing bonus. Put it in writing. Wait, wait, wait. Don't you want me to give you a tour, the firm? Show you where you'll be working? Well, I don't care where I'd be working because I'm a machine. I have to have you. That's what they all say. Confidence is key. Confidence will go before you in a room, even before you enter it. And I know this is this can be a lot to ask because usually your nerves are up to here by the time you're going to an interview. But look confident. Maintain your posture. Wear clothes that make you feel confident because if you look good, then you feel good. And if you feel good, then you give your very best. So make sure you're very confident. Make sure your outfit is on point. It's ironed. It doesn't even have to be expensive. It just needs to be neat and presentable. If you're going to dress, you know, for an interview, remember the LSK code of conduct, which basically instructs us on what to wear. So basically your blues, your blacks, don't go to an interview in yellow or red, especially in the legal profession. If it's allowed in your profession as you're watching this, then please go ahead and just make sure you look good. The reason why you need to look good is because nobody is walking around with an x-ray looking at looking at inside you and seeing your personality or seeing that you're a kind heart. Unfortunately, in as much as it is vain, people will see how you look before they see anything else about you. And if what you're wearing takes someone off, then they'll switch off at that point. It's just, it's human. It's, 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 it's just that. It's human. The next thing that I will let you know when you're going into an interview, please beware of bullies in the interview and I will say this because most of the interviews I went for I found people who looked like they were just there to bully me and I was very 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 intimidated I, I need to tell you this before an interview is a very competitive process so you can't accept to be bullied you can't accept for someone to put you down and when you don't know the answer to a question it is enough to say I do not know no one will eat you it's okay if you don't know and a lot of people who I spoke to you asked very different questions so it's almost it's really difficult to prepare for these interviews but the basics is first of all don't accept to be bullied when you don't know something respectfully don't be arrogant be confident but don't be arrogant say with regard to that question I do not have an answer at this moment but if something comes to mind I will get back to you the beauty with an answer like that is it says that at this point I don't have something to say but as I you know as my brain processes it maybe I'll have something and then I'll get back to you and it's very very polite also as you're going through this interview process and you've read sometimes you can overread or sometimes there are topics you won't touch on it's okay when you're asked questions on a particular topic and you'd want the, the you know the issues to be redirected you can respectfully ask if they're not willing to then attempt and answer them to the best of your ability one area a lot of people focus on is current affairs in an interview so make sure you know generally what's going on in the world around you don't don't block out the world you need to have a very simple clue of what is happening in the world around you. another thing with interviews is once you are basically about the current affairs especially when you're interviewing for pupillage just basically go through the syllabus they'll ask you questions either from civil litigation from commercial like mergers and acquisitions were really big this year so i know a lot of people who were asked on that basically things like you know the changes in the criminal justice system the decision in Muratetu. when it if, if you say you're interested in a certain area as arbitration you'll probably be asked by about the new two case about the synergy case so it's very important also to understand that you have the capacity in an interview to direct the questions a certain way now this is a very risky thing because what happens with the panel is they will ask you what are you interested in or what would you want to do if you say something like international commercial arbitration or international criminal law then you need to understand that you have put yourself in a box meaning they will ask you questions in that area you better be ready to answer them to the best of your ability because if you do not answer them well and you have said that you're interested in that area then that puts you in a bit of a fix so if you're in a situation where you can guide the panel to question you on a certain area that you are confident in or you are good at then tread carefully make sure you lead them to an area that you're an expert in but also don't lie about your interest in an area and then 
you know you lead them to ask you those questions and when you get the job you have no interest in doing what you said just be as truthful as possible the other issue that i would suggest that before an interview you really practice on is basic simple etiquette this is when you get to an interview as you wait at the lobby how do you speak to the secretary make sure you say good morning to him or her because that secretary might speak something good about you so when you get there say good morning when you meet maybe someone who's cleaning around say good morning to them if you can just have a chat with them it's important i remember there's this interview i went to and the security guards were very friendly you know these are the people who you will meet every single day as you go to work should you get the job so just be kind to them it may not necessarily you know those people on linkedin who share this long post and say i, I helped the guard and i cleaned the water and i did abcd and i got the job maybe it could lead you to getting the job but it doesn't have to be kind and it really helps you with maybe feeling nervous when you just talk to people around you so just say hi to these people make sure you talk to them make sure you you know when you get there and you sit let them know so that they can inform the interviewing interviewing panel that someone has arrived for the interview and when you get into the interview room when you when you you know when you enter maybe if it's a boardroom wait to be told where to sit so that ukai can ukona kimbele mbele wait to be directed when you sit down sit um especially in covid season right now some people may prefer to interview you without your mask others may require you to wear your mask so even as a preliminary issue you could just ask you know do you want me to remove my mask am i audible enough with my mask and some places will be like oh no you'll just read the mood and you see everybody's putting the mask on or other places they'll say no we'd like to see you and because we can see you we can be able to best analyze the interview and they'll put measures in place now we've already talked about how you dress we've talked about basic etiquette we've talked about knowing what's in your cv knowing current affairs you know preparing as best as you can in these areas i would like to conclude with one thing that i learned from interviews interviews are very highly intense situations and once you learn that interview i'd want you to know that that's already a win and the reason i'm saying this is because of something we talked about in last week's video and we talked about the level of rejection now when it comes to interviews unfortunately some interviews that you feel that i've aced that interview you end up getting a rejection while some interviews that you are feeling hey that one i'm definitely not getting it you get the call back so what i want you to psychologically prepare yourself as you're going for these interviews is just make have an open mind it's extremely difficult but that's the beauty of having a lot of options apply to as many places as possible know that it could go either way and it's not your fault if they don't pick you don't beat yourself up don't feel that you do you know you don't deserve it you know if you didn't know an answer to a question and this will happen i promise you you will go for an interview they will ask you a question you will search for the answer in your mind you won't remember then the minute you step out of the door i don't know what usually happens but the minute you step out of the door the answer comes flooding back like you feel like you could run back inside and tell them that you figured it out understand it's a very intense situation and you're only human so don't beat yourself up please don't like it's a very intense situation but i would really want you to go easy on yourself now even as i've gone really deep into this i need to explain to you guys that there are various types of interviews you could have an online interview you could have a written interview or you could have a face-to-face -face interview most of the time here in kenya they're usually face-to-face -face interviews where you know you maybe sit at the boardroom and then they ask you questions and you answer them because of covid i was able to do one online interview do i recommend it no if you can afford to go for the face-to-face -face interview please go because with online there's so many things that could go wrong and so many technicalities and for me my interview was supposed to be in the morning then something went wrong with the network and i had to you know stay like for a period of six hours of total anxiety waiting for them to fix it there are also some firms that prefer to have a saving process where they have a written interview then you submit the written interview then they can call you for a face-to-face -face interview there are other firms that i know i think hhm they have the face-to-face -face interview then after the face-to-face -face interview when you qualify for that you come for another interview which is like a written exam then after that i don't even know what the third step is that just shows you i didn't get that far but anyway 
it really really depends so if you can ask around please ask around so that you can understand what you need to do if it's a three tire interview if it's just one step then you'll be adequately prepared thank you so much guys for watching this video i hope you have a few tips to help you as you go in for your next interview as always i wish you the very best and congratulations for getting this far i mean if you have gotten the interview then it means it's something exceptional about you so just run with that run with the confidence that you are worthy to be in that room do not let imposter syndrome get into your mind and as always please be kind to one another and also to yourself if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with a friend who might need it and as always comment down below on any other tips that you feel that i should share bye